throwaway as my friends have my main. Let me just say, I'm not trying to be the evil best friend here. I'm doing this to protect myself, primarily. So I've been in love with Ryan, 25-year-old male, since college. I've tried to deny it multiple times, but eventually I just accepted it. We were friends in high school as well, but got really close in college. That's when I started falling for him. I did think about confessing multiple times, but I was honestly too afraid of losing the friendship and things getting awkward. We did once make out at some party. We were both drunk. He came up to me the next day saying how sorry he was and he doesn't want to make it awkward because of one drunken mistake, etc., etc. That kind of stung, but we agreed. We've been best friends ever since. Ryan did date once in college and not much after that. He's told me he goes on dates, but things never go further. I honestly can't see why as he's such an amazing guy, but whatever. He started dating Leah about a year ago. Didn't introduce her to anyone for like six months, but told me he really likes this one. When we finally met, I could just sense it was going to one of those girl is uncomfortable with boyfriend's friend kind of situations. She was distant with him as well. I did try to make conversation with her as well, but the whole dinner was really awkward. The next day he comes up and says, Leah really liked me. Yeah, right? And wants to do this again. I made excuses, to be honest. Leah has made some comments whenever it was just the two of us, asking how close we both are, how much I know about him, getting really affectionate in front of me. I could get the hint. Me and Ryan stopped hanging out much alone after they started dating, and I initiated it because, honestly, I didn't want some girl to feel insecure in her own relationship because of me. Throughout the whole year, they'd broken up, like four times. Each time Ryan would come to me and rant about it and how it's unfair, and he really wants this to work. I tried to be helpful by giving some advice every time, but one time I was so exhausted that I just told him I think he's trying to force this to work. As he's mentioned several times before, that he feels like he's missing out by not dating. He said maybe, and broke up with Laya the next day. She then came after me, saying I must have made her look bad in front of him, and I'm not a girl's girl and how I want them to break up. And Ryan knew all this, but didn't try to defend me or something. I just hung up and blocked her. I stopped feeling much for Ryan after that incident. Yeah, I wasn't expecting him to argue with his girlfriend for me, but this was his relationship, his problems, his decision, and he was okay with her blaming me for it. He reached out the next day, said he was sorry, he really wanted me in his life, he can't lose this relationship. He genuinely looked sorry, so I didn't cut him off, but I did put some distance between us. He wasn't okay with it, but said he respects that. It's been three months to that incident, and they're now engaged. Ryan again said how Leah was pushing for it, but he's scared this is going too fast, and she wants to get married in April, but also have huge demands about how the wedding should go. I don't say anything, couldn't care less what's happening in their relationship. Leah recently reached out and said she wants me to be a bridesmaid. I politely declined. She then shows up at my place and says she needs to do this to make Ryan happy because apparently he wants me included in the marriage and was planning for me to be the best woman. So yeah, she wants me to be a bridesmaid, so I'm not on the groom's side. This whole thing has been exhausting me way too much. I was thinking if I could even attend their marriage because honestly, I have no interest in watching the guy I've loved getting married and that too to someone who treats him so horribly I'm not making this up. Even our friends think so too. I've realized that I can say no and I don't need to put myself through this. They're planning to send out wedding invites soon and I'm going to decline as I have a work thing that needs me to be out of town. I do have them frequently. Another friend of mine knows about this whole thing with Ryan and he thinks Ryan would be disappointed and this could also cause our friendship to end. I hear him but I'm really not planning to change my mind on this. This is making me relieved, but also kind of guilty. Am I wrong for not wanting to be there on such an important day of his life? But I also don't want to put myself through this whole wedding. How should I go about it? Is there anything else I can do? Also, I'm just gonna say it. If it was some other girl than Leah, 
who he was so happy with and someone who treated him well, I'd have no problem attending the wedding and getting along with the girl. He did once date this girl, who was amazing. They ended in two months as she was moving to another country, but I'm still friends with her. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, so you're in love with him and she's suspicious of you. I'd say that she knows exactly where you're at, but never mind her for a moment. It would be better for your mental health if you end this friendship because it doesn't work for you to be just friends with this guy. You want him, you can't have him. And if you keep hanging out with him and his wife, you're just torturing yourself. And once they're married, his wife is going to discourage this friendship anyway. Since she knows you're in love with him, if she manages to get him to see that too, he's going to hate you and ditch you anyway. So if you end it yourself, he won't hate you because he thinks you're just a lying sneak. Comment two. Hey, I think you just gotta stop being friends with him. Clearly, you've always wanted more and he's fixated on someone else. Marrying them even, it's gonna hurt you forever. Honestly, it makes sense that his fiance doesn't like you. People can tell when you've got a thing for their partner and it feels awkward. Ryan is kind of terrible for pushing his fiance into including you in the wedding, knowing she doesn't like you. Once you cut him off, you'll get over him much easier and meet hot available men. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the support on my last post. It's been a month since then and boy, do I have an update for you all. So after I decided I wasn't going to attend Ryan and Laya's wedding, things got even more complicated. Ryan came over to my place unannounced one evening, looking really upset. He said he and Leah had a huge fight because she found out I wasn't going to the wedding. She accused him of still having feelings for me, which he denied, but it made him question everything. He admitted to me that he was feeling trapped and didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to say, so I just listened. A few days later, I ran into one of our mutual friends, Mark, who had been at a party with Ryan and Laya. He told me that Leah had been all over some guy at the party and Ryan had seen it. They had a public blowout and Ryan left the party alone. I was shocked. I knew their relationship had issues, but I didn't expect Leah to do something like that. Ryan didn't talk to me about the party incident, but he did start texting me more often, just casual stuff at first. Then one night, he sent me a message saying he needed to talk. He came over and we ended up having a few drinks one thing led to another, and we kissed. It was intense and passionate, and for a moment, I forgot about all the drama. The next morning, I woke up to find Ryan gone and a note on my pillow. He apologized for what happened and said it was a mistake. He didn't want to hurt Leah or me. I felt a mix of emotions, anger, sadness, and betrayal. I had let my guard down, and now I was paying the price. I avoided Ryan after that night. I didn't respond to his texts or calls. I needed space to sort out my feelings. Meanwhile, I heard from Mark that Leah had been telling everyone that Ryan and I had an affair, and that was the reason their relationship was on the rocks. I was furious. I had always been careful not to come between them, and now I was being painted as the villain. A week later, Ryan showed up at my door again. He was a mess. He told me that he had broken things off with Leah for good, he realized that he couldn't marry someone he didn't trust and that their relationship was toxic. He also confessed that he had feelings for me, that he always had, but he was scared to act on them because he didn't want to ruin our friendship. I was heartbroken. I had wanted to hear those words for so long, but not like this, not after everything that had happened. I told Ryan that I needed time to think and that he should take some time for himself too we agreed to take a break from each other. It's been a few weeks since that conversation. I've been keeping to myself, trying to heal from the heartbreak. I've realized that I need to move on from Ryan, no matter how much I love him. It's not healthy for me to be stuck in this cycle of hope and disappointment. As for the wedding, it's been called off. I heard from Mark that Leah moved out of Ryan's place and that they're not speaking to each other. Ryan hasn't reached out to me since our last talk, and I think it's for the best. I'm focusing on myself now, my work, and my other friendships. Boyfriend makes more money than me and always throws it in my face, but I get sweet revenge on him. 
We have been dating for over two years. He is my first boyfriend and my first everything. Since he is older, he has had way more relationships. I am his fifth girlfriend and he has had multiple hookups. He works full-time and I work part-time and go to college, studying for the LSAT. He also makes twice as much as me. So he makes about $3,700 to $4,000 a month working 40 to 50 hours a week, while I only bring in $800 to $1,000 after working 18 to 30 hours a week, depending on the week, and making $10 an hour. Our finances and the experience gap we have make our relationship a little imbalanced sometimes. He knew I was in school before we started dating, and he said he was okay with it. I told him I can't work full time and maintain good grades. I know some students can, but I've tried and I can't. I can do 25 hours before my grades start slipping. And he initially said it was okay and he would pay for most of our stuff. However, over the past two years, he has taken every chance he's got to bring up that he pays for everything. He doesn't pay for everything, but it is split about 70-30 most months. To make up for this, I clean daily and cook dinner for him about four times a week. Last night he came home and asked me why dinner wasn't ready. I told him that I was trying to go to sleep early. I usually stay up until 11 or 12 waiting for him and then I don't go to bed until 1 or 2 because school is starting soon and I need to get my sleep schedule back on track because I have morning classes. I explained this to him and he said the least I could do is make him a nice hot meal because he pays for everything I want. Maybe I'm wrong, but I just thought the way he spoke about it was kind of gross and demanding. I tried to explain this to him and he kept saying that all he wanted was his girlfriend to cook him food because he pays all the bills. I get what he's saying, but I do cook for him and I pay the bills that I can. I pay about 30% of the rent, all the utilities, Wi-Fi, and we split grocery costs. I just really didn't feel like cooking last night. And his comment is making me dread cooking dinner tonight because now I feel like cooking for him is required to keep a roof over my head, not something I do because I like it. December was a hard month financially for me. My work cut everyone's hours and my boyfriend had to step up and pay the utility bill. We've had months like this before and every time I start to struggle financially, he does pay for stuff but he starts to bring up how he pays for everything and I just freeload. I feel like this isn't fair. I never bring up how he doesn't clean the house and can't even put his bowls in the sink. I never even counter that I do pay some of the bills. I feel like he sees our relationship as transactional now. I feel like my finances are going to be held over my head until I graduate college and get a full-time job. He always talks about how he can't wait for the day I work full time so he can use me how I use him. I just, I'm doing the best I can, really. Even if I worked full time, I still wouldn't make as much as he does. He knew this when we got together, and if I knew this would be a daily issue in our relationship, I might not have gotten with him. How can I make him see that I cannot go 50-50 with him? Or how to talk about finances with him? Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, I'm sorry. This man didn't choose a teenager because he wanted to build an equitable partnership with someone he respected. It's not just the finances and the experience gap, it's the power gap. He is enjoying wielding the power that he believes he has over you. He is doing it in highly gendered and very ugly ways. Be assured that when you are working, you will be used just as he promises and you will also still be expected to continue to cook and clean. Because reasons. You cannot make him see this as a problem. It's not a problem for him. This is the relationship he wants. He wants this power. He wants the control he believes he has through the purse strings. He will not understand something that is inconvenient for him to admit. Comment two. If he wanted an equal partner, he shouldn't have selected a teenager. He picked a teenager for the explicit reason that the relationship would be unequal with the balance of power in his favor. $4,000 a month does not buy a full-time maid. It does not absolve him of all responsibility for cooking and cleaning. Have you actually done the math on the breakdown? Because if he is only paying an extra 20% rent and zero utilities, chances are he is barely paying half. He doesn't consider you a partner. 
you might want to consider devoting yourself to someone who genuinely believes you're a gold digger, especially considering he actually has very little gold. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a week since I posted about the financial tension between my boyfriend and me, and a lot has happened. I've been reflecting on our relationship and the imbalance that's been growing between us. I've been trying to figure out how to address this without causing more friction. So, after that night when he complained about dinner not being ready, things got pretty tense. I decided to sit down with him and have a serious talk about our finances and how his comments were making me feel. I reminded him of the early days when we were both so excited about my journey through college and how he had promised to support me through it. I brought up how I've been managing my part-time job and studying for the LSAT, all while keeping up with the housework. He listened, but he didn't really seem to get it. He just kept going on about how much more he contributes financially. It was like he had forgotten all the times I'd stayed up late to make sure he had a warm meal waiting for him, or how I'd taken care of him when he was sick, using my limited funds to buy medicine and soup. But then, out of nowhere, he dropped a bombshell. He told me that he had been feeling overwhelmed at work and that he was worried about his job security. He hadn't wanted to worry me, but his company was going through layoffs and he was scared. I was shocked. I had no idea he was carrying this burden all by himself. We spent the next few days trying to navigate this new reality. I started looking for ways to increase my hours at work without sacrificing my grades. It was a delicate balance, but I was determined to contribute more. I even sold some of my textbooks from previous semesters to help cover our expenses. Then, just when I thought we were getting back on track, I came home early one day to find him on a call laughing in a way I hadn't heard in months. It turned out he was talking to his ex-girlfriend. They had reconnected recently, and he claimed they were just friends catching up. But something in my gut told me it was more than that. I confronted him about it, and we had a huge fight. He accused me of not trusting him, and I couldn't help but bring up how he had been making me feel about our financial situation. It was a mess. We both said things we probably shouldn't have. In the midst of all this, I received some good news. I got a scholarship that would cover a significant portion of my tuition for the next semester. It was a huge relief, and I was so excited to tell him, hoping it would ease some of the tension between us. But when I told him, his reaction was underwhelming. He just nodded and said it was good news. That's when I realized that our problems ran deeper than just money. We were both feeling underappreciated and overburdened in different ways. We've been walking on eggshells around each other since then. I've been focusing on my studies and working extra hours while he's been trying to secure his job. We're both trying to find our way back to each other, but it's hard. Last night, he came home with flowers and an apology. He said he was sorry for taking his stress out on me and that he didn't want to lose me. We talked for hours and it felt like we were finally making progress, but there's still a lingering sadness. We've both been hurt, and it's gonna take time to heal. As for the ex-girlfriend, he promised there was nothing going on, but I can't shake the feeling of doubt that's crept in. I want to believe him, but trust once broken is hard to rebuild. Mom always asks me to do last minute favors, but this time her friend G asks her to find a dog sitter for New Year's, and she asks me, I reluctantly agree, but it doesn't make sense for me to commute back and forth posted in another sub, but I added some details and would like more input since there's mixed reviews. For context, my mom has a habit of asking for favors last minute, house sitting normally, even when I have asked for her to give me a heads up. Everyone assumes I will say yes, I normally do. She is also often a people pleaser. Her distant friend, who's known me since childhood, offered me an actual job a while ago. It fell through when they decided to hire someone with experience under their belt instead. No hard feelings, but I got my hopes up and she wouldn't communicate with me. Let's call her G. G told my mom she'd need a dog sitter for New Year's. G has my number, but has only communicated through my mom thus far. In turn, my mom asked me if I could, I said maybe, it depends on my schedule. I'd let her know. I still hadn't said yes and no one said anything. 
Now it is down to the wire and my mom asks when we can go meet her so she can show me the ropes. I tell her I won't be able to because I just got a new job and it wouldn't make sense to commute back and forth. I don't have a car and it would be hours on transit or an expensive Uber. She tells G, who says that she said she'd have to cancel her whole trip and wouldn't be able to hire anyone else and it's non-refundable. My mom said she'd pay for my Uber every day and I was a sucker and let myself feel guilted into saying I'll check it out. The Uber will be more than what I'd be paid a day, by the way. So she's paying for me to do her distant high school friend a favor. We meet G and she is not at all warm and welcoming, does not say thank you, offers me $50 a day to stay overnight and assumes my boyfriend will just be bringing me back and forth for a week. She isn't even particularly nice to my mom either. They were the popular gals in their day and I know everyone has their own dynamic, but this just felt off, like my mom is trying to appease the mean girl. I've forgotten the dates and asked my mom to remind me. She can't bother getting back to me. It's been over a day and just said to ask G. I feel like the help. Edit. She got back to me and told me again to ask G. I said I can't do it and haven't replied when she asked why. I know I'm being petty, but this is how my mom communicates, unless she needs a last minute favor. I know I messed up in saying yes, but how do I fix this? Can I back out? I am tempted to fake an illness so I don't have to go. I never agreed to this until I did under pressure. Edit, thank you for all of your replies. They have given me a lot to consider about how I approach things in the future. I will be updating what I end up doing. I wanna add that there is a group chat that I was added to with G, my mom and I, but I think I'll message them individually. I wanted to add that I was asked a couple weeks ago and there was no correspondence following that. I never agreed until last week when I just said, okay, that's on me. Not sure if that changes anything. Edit two. I also need to add that G is well off. When she offered me a job, it was something that would have changed my entire trajectory. She made it seem like I had it in the bag, then took it back when she found someone better. I'm tempted to tell her I can't because I found a job doing X, Y, Z, what she'd offered me. Because I'm petty. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one, just text G. Sorry for any miscommunication, but I'm not going to be able to dog sit. I have a prior commitment. She never messaged you herself, so you have no agreement with her. I'm sorry, but apparently my mother misunderstood. It's totally bizarre that grown women are engaging in this. If anyone asks me if my 15 year old wants to babysit or dog sit, I tell them to text her directly. If the friend never texted you herself, that's her problem. I would never rely on someone I hadn't spoken to personally, would you? Her lack of communication and planning is not your emergency. Comment two, you can absolutely back out. You were coerced into this against your will. Her non-refundable payment is not your problem. I am so sorry, but I will not be doing this. My mother arranged this without consulting me. Even so, I thought I could help, but my schedule does not allow it. If you have a problem with this, take it up with her, not me. Optionally add, and I didn't realize you were so unpleasant and ungrateful, so frankly, you can suck it. Then go buy two copies of The Disease to Please by Harriet Breaker. One for you, one for your mother. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a hectic three days since my last post, and boy, do I have an update for you all. So after I told my mom I couldn't dog sit for G, things got pretty heated. My mom was upset, saying I was letting her down and that G was counting on me. I felt bad, but I was also angry because it felt like they were both taking advantage of me. Then, out of nowhere, G texted me directly. She was surprisingly nice in the message, which was a shocker considering how she acted when we met. She said she understood if I couldn't do it, but really hoped I could reconsider. She even offered to bump up the pay to $75 a day. I was torn because that's a decent amount of money, but I also remembered how she had dangled that job in front of me before snatching it away. I talked to my boyfriend about it and he was super supportive. He said he'd help me with the commute if I decided to take the gig. But then he dropped a bombshell. He had heard from a friend that G's trip wasn't just a vacation. She was actually going to a job conference for the same position she had offered me before. That stung. It felt like she was rubbing salt in the wound. I was fuming and decided to confront G about it. 
I sent her a message asking if it was true, and she didn't reply for hours. When she finally did, she admitted it was for a job conference, but said it had nothing to do with me. That's when I lost it. I told her I knew she had hired someone else for the job she promised me, and that I felt used. G didn't take that well. She got defensive and said I was ungrateful and that I had no right to talk to her that way. She said she was doing me a favor by offering the dog sitting job. That's when I realized that no matter what, I would always be the backup plan to her. I decided then and there that I wasn't going to be anyone's second choice. I told G I wouldn't be dog sitting for her and that she'd have to find someone else. She was furious and said she'd tell my mom about my attitude. True to her word, G called my mom and told her everything. My mom was disappointed in me, but I stood my ground. I explained to her how I felt and that I couldn't keep being the one she and her friends relied on at the last minute. Now here's the bittersweet part. My mom actually listened to me. She apologized for putting me in that position and said she'd try to be more considerate in the future. It felt like a small victory, but it was overshadowed by the fact that G had canceled her trip and was blaming me for it. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.